Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for another blessed Friday evening. It is 6 p.m. all the way from Sydney, Australia. To those who are with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming, we pray in Jesus' mighty name that you're always in good health and in good spirit. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 105, verses 1 to 22. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing psalms to him, talk of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works which he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O seed of Abraham, his servant, you children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers His covenant forever, the word which He commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant which He made with Abraham and His oath to Isaac, and confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, a statute to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as the allotment of your inheritance, when they were few in number, indeed very few, and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sakes, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land. He destroyed all the provision of bread, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princess at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, a very good evening to everyone. How are we? How are we? How are we? Eh, not bad. That's good. We thank the Lord Jesus for another Bible. Uh, preach session. It's a blessed Friday evening. Before we start our commentary on the book of Revelation, we'll ask our daughter in Christ, Nora, to begin this evening with, uh, with a beautiful hymn. Nora. Did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child you've delivered will soon deliver you Mary did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man Mary did you know that your baby boy will calm a 
the face of God. Oh, Mary, did you great I am, the great I am and the Holy Mother conceived him in her womb for nine months, gave birth to the perfect Lamb of God, the Word incarnate, the Word incarnate who is the Savior and the Redeemer of the world, amen. Okay, our beloveds, we are continuing our commentary on the book of Revelation. This evening we are reading from chapter 17 and verses 2 to 6 inclusive. So it is Revelation chapter 17 and verses 2 to 6 inclusive. With whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication, and on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, last week we spoke about one verse, and we spoke about over an hour and a half. So imagine now we've got six verses, Lord have mercy. Um, we spoke about that one verse, and that one verse was talking about this great harlot. I'll just read it very quickly. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven balls came and talked with me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot, who sits on many waters. So John the Beloved was shown by one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls. He said, come, the angel said to John, come, I'll show you the judgment upon this great harlot. And he called her the great harlot. And we spoke in depth and in length last week about the great harlot. And later on in these verses of this evening, we see that the great harlot is the Babylon the Great. All right, so we're going to go into our verses of this evening. 
So we're continuing the journey about the great harlot. Now, this judgment is directed at this great harlot. Verse 2, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So all the kings of the earth have what committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Everyone got involved with this great harlot. And this great harlot, we said, it is Babylon the Great, later in, in the verses this evening. And Babylon the Great, we saw of the old Babylon, there was something that was built in it, and that was the Tower of Babylon. Now, the Tower of Bobby Babylon was built when humanity got together, when people gathered together, what happened? They did something totally against God. Now, the Tower of Babylon of the old, we see an absolute replica of it or a reincarnation of that tower in the 21st century called the Tower of the United Nations in New York, Manhattan, America. We see another gathering of people. We see the nations getting together. And every time people get together, they get together on evil agendas. They get together to say one thing, God, we believe you exist. God, we know that you are the creator of everything and everyone, but we are getting together to say we are doing it our way, not your way. And we spoke of Nimrod or Nimrod, the son of Cush, the son of Ham, the son of Noah. Father, our father Noah, the great flood, you know, the ark, he had three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. Ham had a son called Cush, and from Cush came Nimrod, who built for the first time after the great flood a city in this entire world. Who was the first human that ever built a city? Cain, the son of Adam and Eve, who killed his brother Abel. And he named that city after his son, Honak or Enoch. Enoch means wisdom. And by the way, the name Cain means gaining something for myself. Because when his mom Eve gave birth to him, she said, I have gained a son for myself. So she named her son Cain, which means gaining something for myself. And have you noticed what I said? gaining something for myself, not God. So Cain is the one who is selfish, egocentric. Cain is the one that says, me, me, me. I don't care neither about God nor about anyone else. Do we see Cain vividly clear and alive again? Absolutely. What do the people of the world do? It's all about me. So Cain built a city. God said to the human race, don't ever build a city. City, civilization. When civilization came, humanity began doing things their way, not God's. The people of the city. Most of the churches are empty. Most of the churches are turned into museums, restaurants, and God knows what else. Because what happens in the city, God is not vividly present. Why, there, why God is not vividly present? Because when people do it their way, all they see is themselves. I built this skyscraper. I built this mansion. I built this thing. I did 
that thing. And when you say, I've done it, what you are saying to yourself, look at me. I can protect my own self. I can do it my way. I don't need no God. I don't need anyone else. I don't need anyone else. So Cain, gaining something for myself, built a city and called it Enoch or Hunak or Echnuch. And the name Echnuch means wisdom. So the people of the city are always in search of their own wisdom, not God's. They are in seek of knowledge. And we spoke about this, so I don't want to repeat myself. And when they are in search of knowledge, to achieve what? To end up knowing what is good and what is evil. You see, when you, when you are searching for knowledge, when you are seeking knowledge, the moment you gain knowledge, what do you end up with? Knowing what is good and what is evil. Does that remind you? The human race go back to the very beginning of humanity. In the Garden of Eden, God placed a tree in the center of the garden called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God warned Adam out of love as a father loving his child, his son. He said, Adam, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because the day you eat from it, surely you shall die. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is my way. The tree of life, which was also present in the Garden of Eden, is God's way, not my way. The tree of life is Christ, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is me. When I do it my way, what happens? The beginning is good, but the end is evil. 100%. So is this the knowledge you people of the world are seeking and searching for? To obtain, to acquire? Wow, amazing. Now look at it. Humanity increased in wisdom. Enoch, humanity increased in wisdom and they built rockets. And after the rockets, they put a nuclear warhead in it. Congratulations, human race. Absolutely wise men and women. What are you going to do with this nuclear warhead? We'll press a button one day. And then what's going to happen? It will wipe us from the face of this planet. So is this the knowledge you've gained? Is this the greatest achievements of all to create nuclear warheads? Incredible. And this is what the world has achieved. They've created something that will be the reason for their absolute destruction. Why? Because when humans do it their way, the beginning is good, but the end is evil. It's evil, my beloved. The great flood dealt with the city which Cain built, destroyed it. After the great flood, the descendant of Cain came. It's in the blood, my dear friend. It's in the blood. So who came? Nimrod, the descendant of Cain. And he built a city. And the first city ever was Babel, followed by Iraq, which is Iraq, followed by Akkad, followed by Kalne. The first city, Babel. What happened in Babel? They built a tower to challenge God. And who built the tower? People, when they got together after the great flood. They went to a place called Shinar, Mesopotamia, between the two rivers of Tigris and Euphrates. Iraq, where I come from. <laughs> the cradle of civilization, my beloved. Everything began in Iraq. And guess what? Everything will end when Iraq was striked in 1980. I don't want to scare you, but 1980, when Iraq was striked, that was the beginning to World War III. And World War III will begin in the Middle East by striking Israel, by this superpower, which is not America. It's Mr. Shanghai, 
Ni hao, China. And with it, Russia. And North Korea. And Iran. Oh. Halatun shama chetori. Khubi. Alhamdulillah, Baba. Okay, so Iran will be involved. But these are the small players, but the main players are Russia and China. The end battle will be between two superpowers, East and West. What is West? America and Great Britain. East, China and Russia. These are the two superpowers will flex their muscles in what is called Armageddon in the Middle East. They will show what powers they have and what wisdom they have achieved and what technology they have reached and what it's going to be the knowledge of humanity which is the destruction of humanity they will wipe this planet nice and neat they'll burn it but who's burning it at the end the lord jesus why because humanity have filled the world with filthiness fornication abomination the lord will clean it with fire he cleanses it in the beginning with water the great flood and in the end he will cleanse it with fire my beloved because the lord god promised i will not bring flood ever again and he put a rainbow in the sky a seven colored rainbow look at satan I have always said this to you. It's not me. It's the Holy Bible. Satan imitates the Lord Jesus, but the opposite way. It's a six color flag. And shame on every church that embraces this flag. You are not a church. You are a den of thieves. You are the sons of the snakes. You so-called Christians. You're fake. You're not Christians. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Man, I'll bury you with my own hands. Because you're cowards, traitors, sold your master with 30 pieces. No, no. Judas Iscariot is a warrior compared to you. He's a man. You are not. The Lord will not know you at the end. Listen up, you so-called Christian leaders. The Lord will not... Man, your punishment will be, will, be, will, be, will be great. Your punishment will be great. You will burn. You will burn. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? There's only one rainbow flag. No, not a flag. Sorry. There is only one rainbow arch in the sky from the Almighty God. A promise that I will never bring flood. Nobody imitates that, you foolish Satan. Foolish Satan. But it's a shame that people are following Satan and worshiping him. Because we're living in the end of times, my beloveds. End of times. By the way, I'm not judging people. I'm just stating truth. Which the United Nations is trying to, to stop. Someone like me can't talk anymore like this because I'm offensive to others. They'll come and prosecute me and probably put me in prison and fine me and close the church. Sin Satan, see the cross? The one who was crucified over 2,000 years ago, you, you foolish Satan, is my Lord and my God. His name is Jesus Christ. He crushed your head under his foot. So in Jesus' mighty name, be gone, Satan, forever. You, you may burn in hell where you belong, you and your foul spirits. And people, wake up. Wake up. It's the end. The end is near. Wake up. Do not be trapped. Do not be deceived by the enemy and the temptations of this enemy. It is the end, my beloved. Don't fall for his traps. Don't follow the world. Don't go after the temptations of the world. Clubbing. Star City Casino. 
gambling, alcoholism, drugs, men and women, Hollywood. Are you listening to Hollywood? You step on Hollywood. Because Hollywood has destroyed millions of people, millions. Do you know who controls Hollywood? Satan through Illuminati's. Satan. It's a deliberate act. For God's sake, wake up. Enough supporting Hollywood. Can't believe this. Already half an hour is gone. <laughs> oh, I feel good. <laughs> the Babel of our time, the Tower of Babel of our time is New York, Manhattan. So who built the United Nations? Two superpowers of the end times, Great Britain and America. But you see, Great Britain ended by the end of World War II in 1945. But Great Britain made America and they pushed America forward and they said, go and we're behind you, we'll back you up. They brought the Leagues of Nations, it was called Leagues of Nations, then changed into the United Nations. So the United Nations is the product of Great Britain and America. So who rules now over the United Nations? America. When humanity get together, they do one thing, evil in the sight of God. Evil, my beloved. So all the kings of the earth committed fornication, of course, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. All the nations that are members in the United Nations are in it together. They are with America in it together. They have to be in the same club. They have to be members in the same club. And if they're not, they will have sanctions put against their countries. Some countries in Africa, the presidents of those countries, God bless them. And I'll say it very loud, God bless them. They said, we will not allow LGBTQ, RSTU, VYZ to be in our countries. You, you know what America threatened them with? Sanctions. They said, we're, gonna, we're not going to trade with you anymore. In the name of United Nations, we're here to serve humanity. No, you are here to enslave humanity in the name of democracy and human rights. <laughs> what a joke, what a joke, human rights. It's the biggest joke and the biggest lie ever invented in our time and, and age. It was the reinventment of the wheel, Democrata, of the ancient Greeks. They were the original invaders of democracy and it's in Greek it's called Democrata and today they are using the same methodology what democracy the only time any human being is free when Jesus Christ is ruling over their life because he is the only true God there is no other God but Jesus Christ of Nazareth all glory to his holy name you may be offended, you may be angry, you may be upset. That is definitely not my intention. I'm telling you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I've been there, I've seen it, I've done it, I've come back. It is Jesus. There is no Muhammad, there is no Buddha, there is no Krishna, there is no one. It is Jesus, this is the truth. You want to believe it or not, sooner or later you'll find out, but I pray it's never too late. When you find out, it's never too late. It won't be too late for you. I pray for that. I pray for that. So all the nations that are part of the United Nations, they are in it together, and they were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Her fornication, Babylon the Great, the 
United Nations of our times is the Babylon the Great. They were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Wine. Wine, my beloveds, biblically speaking, talks about joy. It, res it talks about, symbolizes joy. You know, when we go to the book of, according to the Gospel of John, the Gospel according to St. John chapter 2, what happens? There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus Christ was, Jesus was invited to the wedding. He changes the water into wine. There was a wedding. What is the wedding here telling us? There was joy and happiness. So wherever you see the word wine, it's talking about joy. But you see that wine, which the Lord made it wine, he turned it from water into wine. And the color of the wine is red, which is, re which is resembling blood. So, wine, joy, water, life, blood, death. Wine, joy, water, life, and blood resembles death. These were drunk with the wine of her adultery, fornication. So that means they are all swimming and drinking death in the name of Human Rights United Nations. When we look around us now, we see the leaders of the nations of the world. How are they acting? How are they behaving? Absolute death. They're introducing laws, laws of death. They're accepting things of, or, of death origin. They are doing things that are totally against the almighty God, the creator, of everything and everyone visible and invisible everything they do is absolute evilness they're drinking they're drunk with the wine of her fornication well they want to get to your children now to our children and say to our children you are free, an innocent child that now is being brainwashed to feel that if you're a boy and you feel you're a girl, then you're a girl. And if you're a girl and you feel you're a boy, then you are a boy. An absolute innocent baby that knows nothing of this life and this world. They are brainwashing them into absolute destruction what an evil, evil, evil mind. Evil, evil mind. When the Lord changed the water into wine, he made people sober. And that was his blood. Wedding of Cana is talking about Calvary, the cross. When that MC came and drank from that water which was changed by the Lord into wine, he realized it was the quality wine. He wouldn't have known this unless he became sober because they were drunk, they ran out of wine. And in the Middle East, back then, the wedding used to go for seven days on end, my beloved. Seven days they've been drinking wine. They were swimming in wine. So they were drunk to the core. For him to realize this is a quality wine, he must have become sober. The Lord said, water is life, wine is joy, and the blood, red blood, is my blood, which will be shed on Calvary, which is death. My death on the cross will give you one life, water, and will give you wine, joy. Because life, Without Jesus Christ, there is no joy in it. You will run out of wine and you will be the most miserable being ever to exist. So many people have everything at their fingertip, 
but you sit with them for five minutes, you'll see them the most empty, miserable people in this world. Why? Because the only one who can give you true joy, the only one who can give you true life is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Not your own achievements. You think by having money, you'll be happy? You're wrong. You think by being married, you'll be happy? <laughs> This came as a fluke, right? So just kidding. You think by being married, you're happy. You're absolutely wrong. <laughs> Do you think by being a bishop, you'll be happy? Yes. <laughs> when you have Jesus, it's the only time you are happy. It's the only time you're glad, you're joyous. Christ, my beloved, Christ, Christ. Verse 3, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy. My goodness. He carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I want to stop at the word wilderness. Wilderness, my beloved, resembles the world in four things. Wilderness resembles this world in four things. Number one, the wilderness is a dry, desolate place. The world is a dry, desolate place as well. It's a dry, dead place. Why? Because if you live in this world, for this world, the moment the spirit leaves the body, whatever you have achieved, whatever you have gained, Whatever you have done, everything will be taken away from you in a blink of an eye. The moment the spirit leaves the body, you'll come out empty-handed. It is absolutely dry, desolate, dead place. I have millions. I have mansions. I have cars. I have clothing. I have diamond. I have gold. I have linen. Spirit leaves the body. Come on, take it with you. Can you? You leave empty-handed. It's a dry, desolate, dead world. Just like the desert. Just like the wilderness. That's one. Number two. In the wilderness there is vicious animals. And in the world there are vicious people trying to devour you and me. With their evil agendas. Vicious animals. In the desert, vicious people in the world. Um, what's that Hitler guy? Oh, Klaus Schwab, one of them. Yeah, he's a puppet. Um, what is it called? World Forum? Economic World Forum. Uh, man, look at these beautiful, eloquent titles. Economic World Forum. Mr. Heil Hitler, please. Just go away and leave us alone. And the puppets who are behind you, leave us alone. There are vicious people in the world, just like there are vicious animals in the desert. Number three, the desert is very deceptive because all its ways are the same. When you lose track in the desert, you cannot find your way back because every way looks exactly the other the same. The world is so deceptive in its ways. The moment you dive deep into the world, so difficult to come back. So difficult. One of the deceptive ways, I went out with me mates. We sat in this car and there was the big Sabufa Khabibi in the back seat. The first time was stunning, was beautiful. Finally, I farewelled mom and dad, these old fashioned Middle Eastern people. I farewelled them and I came out of that prison called home. And I sat in the car and I went with my friends downtown and I saw all the colors, all the ways of the city. So colorful the city at night time. When do you go to the city? At night, baby. In the morning, it's boring. But when you go at night, 
all Allah. The moon is so cute. There is one moon in the sky and there is plenty of moons walking in front of my eyes. Boys and girls, baby. And look at the colors, the way they dress up, almost with nothing. You go into the city, so many waves, so many deceptive ways, so many cunning ways, so many poisonous ways. At the beginning, you're an innocent young man and a young woman. You continue that journey. You are no longer that innocent. You fall into so much bad habits. Now you are entrapped. You want to come out, you don't know how. You're struggling. You've got addictions. So many different addictions. You're struggling how to set yourself free once again. The world is a deceptive world. Do not fall for the temptations of the world, which is number four. The desert, the sun, S-U-N, in it, it's a scorcher, it's a killer. You end up in the desert for a few days, the sun alone could end up being fatal. It can kill you. You get that sun strike, because in the desert there is no shelter. In the desert there is no place to cool down. It's absolutely open. There is no shelter, there is no refuge, there is nowhere. Dry, dead, no water. And the sun is burning me, going to my death. And the sun of the desert is the temptations of the world. The temptations of the world is exactly what the sun does to a person in the desert. The temptations burn that person until it finishes him off. We had a scotch on the rock for the first time. I ended up an alcoholic. The first time I hit that button in Star City Casino. And then I hit the jackpot. Wow, what a feeling. I ended up losing everything, including my house, my marriage. I ended up being a gambler, an addictive gambler. In the city, brothels. Anyone home? I can have pleasure with money. That is the sun burning you, my son. That is the sun killing you, my son. That is Satan taking you away from your Christ, my son. Taking you away. Don't ever, don't ever, don't ever lose your eternity for a five minute pleasure. Don't ever, my son. Don't ever. Get married lawfully and enjoy that marriage faithfully in the eyes of God. He took me in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy. This beast, we see this beast in Revelation chapter 13 if you recall, for those who are with us. In Revelation chapter 13 we see this beast, however there is a difference in chapter 17 and we'll go through some of the differences. Look at this, the number one thing. He saw a woman sitting on this scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy. In Revelation 13, it says it has one blasphemous name written on it. So in Revelation 13, there is only one name. Here, there are many names written on this scarlet beast. 
Why in Revelation 13 has only one blasphemous name? Because Revelation 13's beast is talking about the end of times, our 21st century. What will the people of the world do in the end of times? They will try to do one thing, deny one name, the name of God. The true divine God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the way, everything that is happening in the world is because Satan hates Jesus. Satan doesn't hate anyone else. You know why? Because he's got a hold of everyone else. But the only one he couldn't got, get the hold of was Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The only human being that overcame Satan was Jesus. That's why he hates he hates his name. He hates everything to do with Jesus Christ. You want to go and be an atheist, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, Satan will leave you alone. The moment you take Jesus with you, all hell breaks loose. All hell breaks loose. You are in a Muslim family and you invoke the name Jesus Christ, they will get up and kill you. You are a Buddhist and you invoke the name of Jesus Christ, they will deny you. You are a Hindu, they will, oh, they will burn you. The moment you invoke the name Jesus, everyone hates you. And begins with your own family. The closest people ever to you. Have you thought about it? Well, you better think about it because there is something totally different in this person called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because Satan doesn't want you to go to Jesus. He knows the moment Jesus have a hold of you, he's lost you forever. And Satan, as a businessman, he doesn't want his company to be bankrupt. He doesn't want to lose profit. So he will do anything and everything to bring you back. He'll bring people against you. He will make you lose your job. You start having problems. You may start having health issues. God knows. But stay faithful. Because at the end, I'm not here in this world forever. Whether somebody kills me or not, one day I have to go. I can't live here forever. So whatever you want to take, take. It's all right. The sooner the better. I want to go back to my sweetheart. Because I want to dance with this body, not somebody. I want to dance with this body. My beloved Whitney Houston. I want to dance with this body. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So the beast in Revelation 13 has one name, blasphemous name, because the world will deny the name of God. But this beast has many names. Why? Because this beast in Revelation 17 will be directed at the Christian world. Martyrdom is coming back. Congratulations. Christians will be persecuted and will be slain once again before the end comes. That's why he has many blasphemous names. He is coming to devour the Christians, my beloved, because the next superpower will go against Christianity extremely bad. The next superpower. And I can say that superpower. It is China. You know, Mr. Mr. Donald Trump, when, when he was asked about the virus, he said, it's a Chinese virus because it came from China. It came from China. Yes, the next superpower will be China along with Russia and China will slay the Christians. Now again, I'll say this. I'm not talking about the Chinese people because I love them. From the bottom of my heart, I do and I mean it. I'm talking about the governmental system of China. It is absolute evil. You know what their symbol is? The dragon. Oh, the dragon in the Holy Bible is Satan himself. That is their symbol. 
And you know, on Chinese New Year, they come with this dragon in the streets with the, with the drums and everybody's excited and happy. Welcoming the dragon. Well, congratulations. You just welcomed Satan into your life. What dragon? What foolishness? It is an absolute communist party to the core, an atheistic ideology to the core. They believe in nothing but themselves. They will kill their own father, their own mother. They don't give one penny about no one, the government. Very vicious. But the Chinese people, family oriented people, hardworking people, so dedicated, so faithful, but they are enslaved by their own government. Enslaved. Enslaved. I wish, I wish. The whole world learns values and principles of the Chinese people because they have a lot of good qualities in them, a lot. And when I say Chinese, I also mean Asians in general. They're Eastern mentalities like us. Family to them is extremely important. A son who is married when he talks to his dad, yet he's married, huh? not a child. When he talks to his dad, he, he looks down, not at, at his dad's face out of respect. Where do you see that in the West? A little kid he can't even talk to. He'll tell you off. By the way, is it hot? Is it hot? Yes. Can we um, maybe turn the air conditioning on? Look, it's my presence, I know that, it's because I'm always hot, um, but yeah. So he has many names of blasphemy because this beast is directed at the Christians. In the end, Christianity will be persecuted, my beloved, very, very harshly. Very harshly. Having seven heads and ten horns. If you notice Revelation 13 beast, on those, on those horns there was crowns. But here you don't see crowns, just seven heads and ten horns. And what is a crown here a, a resembling? Resembling victory. Well, this beast has been defeated. There is no crowns of victory. Why? Because it's a scarlet beast. Scarlet is a dark red meaning death. So he has been overcome by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's why he's just got the seven heads and the ten horns. But the crowns have been stripped off from him because he's been defeated by the king of all kings who puts on the crown of glory on his head. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. The woman was arrayed in purple. Purple is a color of royalty. By the way, did you know the color purple does not exist as a color it's a combination between red and blue a piece of information along the way and eh, maybe you didn't know this I don't know but there is no purple color purple color is a result of red and blue combined together mixed together now blue sky heaven red blood earth when you put heaven and earth together you get purple who came to this realm and the two became one in him, Christ, the King who wears purple. The divinity of Christ, blue, heaven. The humanity of Christ, red, blood, human. So the divinity and humanity united together became royalty, purple. This beast, this woman is dressed up arrayed in purple and scarlet, imitating the Lord, but in a very deceptive way. Look, the world is trying to rule. The people of the world, they want to rule. They want to conquer. 
Some fool comes out and says, we need to reduce the world's population to a billion people instead of eight billion. What, an, what a fool. This idea came from the round table. Actually, before the round table, British, very smart people, but for evilness. The government, very, very smart, but unfortunately for evilness. Arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold. See gold again. The king wears gold. This is all royalty. And gold meaning very precious substances and precious stones, my goodness, and pearls. Wow. Who is this woman? The United Nations. Who is this woman? America. If I'm not mistaken, in, in the Italian language, Amerigo is, a, is for a male. America is for a female. So the woman here is America who is behind the United Nations. So this woman is adorned with purple, with gold, with precious stones. The entire world's economy hangs on how America performs. When America sneezes, Australia catches a flu. Oh, by the way, Albanese just went and signed the deal with America to build rockets for them here. And we're improving. I told you this, guys. The first present as a rocket will come from China to Australia. That will be the first present ever from China to Australia. Thank you. Down under. Press the button, Mr. Ching Wing Zing, and send the rocket across the continent. So you can build rockets for America. You will get a rocket <laughs> in the end from China. <laughs> and that'll be the end of Australia. <laughs> we need to um, run to the um, far places, the little unknown villages. A time will come, people will run away from the cities. And that time is not very far off. Because everyone who stays in the city will be a slave to the new world order. To the one world order. They will be a slave to it. You cannot, as the Holy Bible says, you cannot buy, sell, get married. See you later, Rachel. If you want me, come to the village, baby. <laughs> and milk the cow. Oh, Isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? Milk the cow. One day I want really to talk with you and share this thing that is inside of me about how humanity have really distanced themselves from the true divine God. The way we behave. Wow. So far away from what God truly expects of us so far precious stones and pearls this woman is the united nations behind it america and great britain pearls pearls talks of victories and sacrifices pearls talks of victories and sacrifices what is the United Nation doing? The United Nation is saying, we're here to sacrifice for the well-being of humanity. We're here to make sure with all the hard work and dedication of the UN to make sure that humanity live in absolute fairness, human rights and the likes of that. And we are here to make sure it is implemented to the core. So at the surface level, we are here to serve you, people of the world. But beneath the surface, we are here to enslave you, people of the world, in the name of 
human rights. I heard someone in Japan, I'm not sure if it's true or not, decided to be a dog and finally he's done it. Is that true? It is? Are you sure? Well, I want to get that dog. Well, I will pay anything for it. In the name of human rights, what has become of the human? Lost? Gone. Gone, my beloved. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Western world, the Western world is built on individualism. The Eastern world is built on family value. You go into any TV channel, any Sky channel of the Western world, do they ever talk about family bond? Do they ever talk about family qualities? Never. All they say is, you, are, you have the right. You want to leave home? No problems. Mom and dad giving you a hard time? Just call us. We'll come and take you away. We'll provide for you a shelter. We'll give you whatever you need. You are an adult now, 16, 18, 19, 20. You're mature. You can do whatever you want. It's a free country. Why? Because the moment this is embedded in you the moment your brain is washed with this false idea idea that's it they've got you you're finished the number one thing you become godless and once you're godless you are a very easy prey to be devoured it's the family bond that keeps you intact and keep you sane not insane, but sane. Family. Unfortunately, you don't see that being publicized that often in the Western world because they don't want family bond. They don't want family value because when you go to family, you'll find God. And they want to take you away from this God, this true divine God. So my son, my daughter, don't forget you belong to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the only true divine God. Don't ever be ashamed of your Lord. Don't ever say, I don't, I, I don't want to be a Christian anymore. Don't ever. The biggest mistake you could ever make in your life is when you deny your Messiah. That is the greatest of all mistakes. The ultimate. The one that is irreplaceable. Don't ever walk away from your Lord. Don't ever. Don't ever, my child. Precious stones and pearls. Well, the United Nations are victorious every time they pass a law that is against God. In the name of human rights. We will enslave you in the name of human rights. We will kill you in the name of human rights. We will take your children away from you in the name of human rights. We will do child trafficking in the name of human rights. You filth. Every year in America alone, about 850,000 children, innocent children disappear. In Australia it happens. Everywhere in the Western world. And you know what they do with those children. Man, if I, if I have my hand on these people, I'll say to the Lord Jesus, time out for a moment. <laughs> and I'll bring the red belt to karate. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So they are victorious on the surface level, but beneath it, they are enslaving and destroying humanity, my beloved, in the name of human rights. Having, a, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. My goodness. 
a golden cup. What does this remind you of? Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knelt and he cried out to his Abba, to his father, and he said, Father, let this bitter cup pass me by, but let it be not my will, but thy will. The Lord drank that bitter cup for our salvation and redemption. And this woman arrayed in purple and scarlet in her hand is a golden cup full of abominations, filthiness, and the filthiness of her fornication. My goodness, my goodness. What has destroyed humanity is technology. iPhone. <laughs> what has destroyed humanity is technology. It is the filthiness of her fornication. She's got a cup full of abomination and the filthiness of her fornication. It's a golden cup. It's a golden cup. Wow. She's proud of her cup. It's gold. Precious. I've made it. I've worked very hard to get this golden cup. Even when you run in the race, when you come first, they give you a golden medal. And in soccer, when you win the World Cup, they give you a golden cup. So she's saying, I am number one. I conquer the world. I do as I please. No one can stop me. But that cup is full of filthiness, abomination and the filthiness of her fornication. Out of this woman came destruction. Entertainment was, me, was made filthy. TV channels, internet, where did that come from? The West, America, the woman. My goodness. There are solid, good quality people in America. Even in the governmental system, there are still good Christians and morally sane people. But unfortunately, the ones who are running it now are not those quality people. Are not. Run away from Hollywood. Please don't fall into that trap. And don't fall into the trap of watching too many things on that little screen. What is that going to take you? Into a lot of ugly places. A lot of bad pictures. Very ugly. Very ugly, my beloved. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the one and of the abominations of the earth. On her forehead was written, Mystery Babylon the Great. Did you know, in the olden days, far from all of my daughters who are here and who are watching us, a woman that walked in the wrong path, if you know what I'm saying, a woman that walked in the wrong path and made that wrong path her profession, like a job, yeah? She lived, made, she made a living out of this way she used to write on her forehead, I am such a woman. In the olden days, she used to write on her forehead, I am such a woman. So when some man sees her and sees the writing, he knows it's one of them. This woman had a name written on her forehead, Mystery, Babylon the Great. Why Mystery? Because the United Nations, what is mystery? Something that is unknown, hidden, yes? 
So the United Nations, at the surface level where you see things, they try to do things right by humanity. But beneath it, in secret chambers and places, they are pushing venomous things into humanity to try and destroy it. It's a mystery. At the surface level, it looks good. But beneath the surface level, it is absolutely poisonous to the core, evil to the core. That's why it's mystery. And it's Babylon the Great, the mother of all harlots, adulterous, and the abomination and of the abomination of the earth of the earth and verse 6 I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus Wow drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus so who are the saints and who are the martyrs of Jesus it is when the Roman Empire became Christian for the first time ever in its history the Roman Empire prior to Constantine the Emperor the son of Helena or Helen the Queen prior to that time all those who were killed they were martyrs of Jesus Neron Diocletians these vampires of emperors they slain the Christians they slain them blood baths everywhere so all those who were killed prior to the conversion of the Roman Empire to Christianity all those who were killed and slain they were called the martyrs of Jesus after Roman Empire becoming Christian they slain the Saints how do you you can martyr you can kill a person in two ways literal or emotional literal is you take a sword a gun and you just kill them but in the emotional one you can kill them with a word see those martyrs of Jesus they were all killed by the sword literally they were slain but after Roman Empire becoming a Christian what happened the Saints of the Lord were martyred were slain by the word because heresies came after the Roman Empire becoming a Christian empire heresy started coming out you see when human beings become comfortable they drift away from the Lord Jesus the moment you're comfortable you lose track King David as long as he was fighting he was very close to the Lord Jesus one day he saw he said I'm gonna take a week off I've been fighting for too long I'm tired I'm exhausted he took one week off he fall into adultery you know before when the Roman Empire was slaying the Christians the greatest martyrs the greatest Saints of all came out of that era one of them is st. George the Prince of Martyrs st. George he was from that era the martyrs of of Jesus was st. George after Romans becoming Christians what happened to the Christian Church they united with the government with the state and when they united with the states they became free no longer persecuted no longer killed freedom I can preach anywhere anytime absolutely free in public arenas because the government is Christian now what happened heresies came the word slain so many Christians and put him into heretical teachings and they were lost and detached from the Lord Jesus Some of them came in and said, Jesus is only spirit. He doesn't have a body. Some of them said, no, he is only a body, but the divine is not him. He's just a human. He's not God. All heresies came after the Roman Empire became Christian. The word can destroy a person as well like a sword that kills. The word can kill. That's why, my beloveds, when God came to create this body, to the eye, he put one gate, eyelids. But to the, to the tongue, he put two gates, the teeth and the lips. Why? Because God is trying to say to all of us, the tongue is the most dangerous member in your body. Be careful what you say. Because the word can make or break. Before you say anything, think about it a million times moreover. Because the moment it's released, 
It could be an arrow and it could pierce someone's heart and destroy that heart for good. Be careful what you say, my child. So bite on that tongue and bring the lips down as well. There's two gates to shut your tongue. La, 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 la. Be very careful. So next time you want to say something, you were thinking of saying, I hate you. And then you come and say, no, no, I thought about it deep down. I said, it's not worth it. I love you, baby. Say a nice word. And if you cannot say any nice words, then say absolutely nothing. You're doing yourself a favor and everyone else around you. Doesn't cost money to say a nice word. Why don't you say it? In fact, it's very effortless to say a nice word and it takes a great deal of energy and effort to say a nasty word. When we say a nasty word, we're, we're upset, we're tired, we're angry, we're frustrated. But when we say a nice word, we can sleep at peace. So light, like a feather. Say a nice word. Jesus loves you. Love the Lord and love one another. Pray for your family. Pray for your parents. Pray for your siblings. Pray for your friends. Pray for your cousins. Pray, my child. Let the Lord touch every heart. Pray, my beloved. So I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints after the Roman Empire becoming Christians and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus before the Roman Empire becoming a Christian one. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. John the Beloved was amazed greatly with great amazement when I saw her. When are we greatly amazed? When we see something from someone that we never anticipated to see coming from that someone. When someone who is a stranger or distant to you does something wrong or says something that is offensive to you, you're not going to be, you know, greatly amazed. But when are you going to be greatly amazed, i.e. shocked, when the closest person ever to you comes out at you like a sharp sword and pierce your heart with very, very, very nasty words. Wow, I'm greatly amazed. I never thought this person would do such a thing, would say such a, th a thing. I am shocked. To my core, I am shocked. I never expected it. John the Beloved, why was he greatly amazed? Because he saw Christians killing their brothers, Christians. Christians going against one another. He said, in this, I was greatly amazed. I never thought that day would come. Christians are supposed to be brothers in Christ, not enemies. And we saw that happening in the medieval ages. Christians going against one another, killing one another, um, excommunicating one another. Wow. And until today, there are so many factions in Christendom. And each one says, I'm right. So sad. So greatly amazed. When will the brothers in Christ unite for the Lord's sake? Until when you're going to say, I am Catholic and it is the only way to the Lord. Until when are you going to say, I am an Orthodox and it's the only way to the Lord. Until when? I am amazed seeing Christians killing each other, destroying each other, going against one another. That what made me to be greatly amazed. Where we should have been brothers in the Lord, united. We put our hands together to be strong, 
to face the currents of the world, the nasty, poisonous world. Look at us. Look at us, my beloveds. The church became weak because brothers became enemies. Within Christendom, within this family bond, we became enemies. We separated ourselves from one another. And that's why when the Toyota Corona came, <laughs> the church leaders welcomed it with an open arms and they said, yes, we'll open the churches and make them hubs of vaccinations, but no place of worship. No, 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 no. That's dangerous. We are looking after our faithfuls. Dangerous to come and pray to the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth because a little tiny little virus, a lie of the 21st century is going to come and kill you and kill your family as Mr. Hazard put it together. Who are these people? Who are they? In the newsletter, I've, I've got it in my car. I don't know if it's the Daily Telegraph. I don't know which newspaper. I can't remember now. I'm getting old. It's the front page, Anthony Fauci. Lying through his teeth about the so-called Corona. Listen. I don't need to be a doctor to find out if it's if it's a virus or not, if it's true or not, I need the doctor to tell me if it's, if it's right or wrong. When the Lord Jesus reveals to me, I don't need to be an educated person of this world to find out if it's true or not, because when God reveals it to me, I don't need anyone else to speak anymore. And the Lord did reveal that to this piece of dust in 2018, two years prior to 2020. He said, these were his, word, his words, I will bring the whole world down on its knee, to its knees. I will bring the whole world down to its knees in 2020. That's what he said. I will bring the whole world to its knees in 2020. The Lord allowed Satan to do it. Why? Because John the Beloved says, I looked at the Christians going against each other and I was greatly marveled. The Lord is hurt. The Lord is upset. The Lord is angry. The Lord is very sad seeing Christianity cut to pieces and each one claiming to be right. In the Protestant branch alone, in America only, there is over 3,000 branches and everyone says I'm right. Well, which one? Which one? Which one? Before the end, the Lord will refurbish and renew his house. This is guaranteed. Please pay attention. The Lord has had enough on waiting on church leaders to unite. He's been waiting for over 1600 years to unite. Till this day, none of them are doing anything about it. In fact, they are uniting with Satan, if anything. So the Lord has had enough. He has had enough. He's coming. He's coming to unite his church. But I can assure you and I can tell you this much. He will do it the hard way, not the easy way. The beginning to this hard way was Corona 2020. Oh, what he will do to the church leaders. Those who are, do not wish to bow down before the Lord Jesus. He knows us all one by one. 
before he placed us in the womb of our earthly mothers he knew us all one by one so church leader you can run but you cannot hide when you embrace laws against the Lord Jesus you are a son of a snake and when you call darkness light you are a son of a snake until you come back to Jesus Christ truthfully from the heart and put your head at his sandals at his feet there is no salvation for you nor for me until we do so as church leaders I need to put my head at the feet of the Lord and beg him for mercy beg him for mercy beg him for mercy there is no salvation the Lord Jesus showed a small gesture of unity all hell broke loose against me why would I put a saint picture that is not of ours I didn't the Lord did do you have a problem now and if you've got a problem then you go and you answer to Jesus Christ of Nazareth if you're a man and if you're smart enough go and answer him we've done it our way in the house of the Lord for too many years the Lord is fed up believe me it's not me talking stop saying this bishop is attacking for God's sake wake up who am I to say such a thing I'm nothing but a piece of dust if there is anyone who is a sinner is me if there is anyone who is the weakest of all is me but it's not me talking this voice is the voice crying in the wilderness of the 21st century it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth speaking through John the Baptist did I say that for God's sake it's the Lord the moment I stop talking I leave the church I'm the weakest of all I'm nothing who am I to face challenges much greater than this piece of dust who am I it's the Lord through his grace I've asked him Lord you be free in this church when I do things against you you step on me when I out of ignorance out of weakness out of blindness I do stupid foolish things you override me don't ever don't ever Lord let me do anything that you do not wish for it to be you stop me and even if it takes you break me then go for it Lord I set you free in my life I give you my will I give you every I the whole church is yours the whole congregation is yours everything is yours the holy altar the cross the church the people the clergy men everyone and everything is yours you do as you please from the bottom of my heart to your sacred heart Lord I pray you accept for the sake of your holy mother accept it accepted Lord my children out of experience I say this just be honest when you speak to the Lord be honest the Lord worries him not how sinner how sinful you are 
The Lord worries him not how many sins and heavy burdens you are carrying. The Lord, one thing worries him, are you willing to give him your heart or not? That's what matters to the Lord. The Lord is more than capable, more than able of taking care of all of your sins, all of your foolishnesses, all of your inequities. He is more than capable. One little tiny drop of his precious blood can wash away the sins of the entire world from the former Adam to the last human being that comes to the face of this earth. One little tiny drop of his precious blood can wash everyone's sins clean and whiter than snow. But he wants your heart. Son, daughter, go to him. If you haven't done it before, go now. Tonight, before you sleep, I beg you, kneel in your room and say, Lord, all my life I've done it my way. Tonight, I surrender everything to you, Lord. I give you my life. I give you my whole being. I entrust you with everything. And I'm saying to you tonight, Lord, I tried it my way and I failed. Failed, Lord. I failed. And to add to the word failure, miserably I failed not only I failed but miserably I failed Lord take over I can't do it anymore I don't want to do it anymore my way you do as you please Lord and let me see if you're not gonna change if you don't then come and say what you preach is wrong because I preach with confidence why because I know who I speak of. This sweetheart, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to his holy name. And I'll say it with, John, with Simon Peter, and I'll leave you with it. Simon Peter and John the Beloved went up to the temple to pray, and they walked through the beautiful gate, and they saw some paralyzed man at the gate begging for help. And Simon and John walk in, but Simon Peter comes back and he says, silver and gold I have not to give you, but one thing I have and I give you this very moment. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. He jumps and leaps for joy and walks into the temple and says to the priests, the scribes and the Pharisees, Jesus Christ is the living Messiah. Jesus Christ is the living God. He put me back on my feet with one word uttered from his servant, Simon Peter. I don't want silver and gold. I want Jesus Christ to be my silver and gold, my precious stones, my pearls, my purple outfit. I want the Lord. I don't want nothing else. I just want the Lord. This is the way every Christian should ask and should live for. I want the Lord, nothing else. Amen. Amen. Nora, let's get up now. Come on, my beautiful daughter. Let's hear your beautiful voice. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel And I know he was.
watches over me. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy and I sing because I'm free His eye is on the space And I know he watches, I know he watches, I know he watches me. Amen. I can't sing like that. That was beautiful. Well done, my beloved Nora. Actually, put your hands together for Nora. And I, I, I will always love you. For some reason, I always remember uh, Whitney Houston. You yeah, know, there you go. All right, um, just a couple of announcements, and then we'll call it a blessed evening. Um, first one is, oh, was it today? The feast of Saint Mary. Was it today? Ah, oh, Sunday. Yes, correct. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, oh, yes, it will be held on this. So the feast of uh, Bishop, uh, not Bishop Mary, Saint Mary, uh, the first apostle, well, uh, was actually today, but it will be, uh, be celebrated this Sunday. So we are celebrating the feast of uh, Saint Mary, one of the 70 apostles which the Lord Jesus himself chose and appointed while the Lord was in the flesh on earth. See, the Lord chose 12 and then 70. Mary the saint was one of the 70th disciples, and it's his feast today, but we are celebrating it on Sunday, God willing. Uh, the Feast of Transfiguration, according to the old calendar church, will be uh, on Saturday the 19th of August. We will be holding a um, Holy Mass service in the church here on Saturday the 19th of August at 9 a.m., 9 a.m., which is the Feast of Transfiguration. Um, we are going to Melbourne next week, by the grace of the Lord Jesus. We just came back from Adelaide, actually. I just uh, would like to say one thing to our people in Adelaide. Oh, it was absolutely beautiful. It was a beautiful, small church in the middle of uh, nowhere in a farming area. Uh, very cold, very cold. I wasn't feeling well at all yesterday, but thank God it's not Corona, so I'm all right now. Uh, so yeah, and, and the people came on Saturday and Sunday. We had more people on Sunday. Uh, it was absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely meeting all our beloved people in, um, in Adelaide. And uh, we thank the Lord Jesus for our beloved son, Antonio. Uh, he was the reason the Lord used him to um, bring us there and bring people. Uh, we met some wonderful people and wonderful families there and um, they've asked us to go back again. I said, um, I think I might just move to Adelaide permanently. Uh, okay. Yeah. No, no, it's just, 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 you know, it's all right, relax, relax. Right? Um, so, yeah, so we'll be, hopefully we'll go again on a visit, temporarily, <laughs> temporarily. <laughs> so, yeah, it was a wonderful experience in Adelaide, the first time ever, uh, going there on a, a, um, on a, a sort of pastoral uh, visit. Uh, we hope it continues. Uh, next week, we're going to Melbourne. 
there will be Bible preach uh, sessions held on Wednesday, the 9th of August, and Thursday, the 10th of August, which is next week at 7 p.m. I've just been told today, and this is more so for the people of Melbourne, our beautiful and beloved people of Melbourne. Uh, they just messaged me today, um, our committee there. They said, Bishop, we have been bombarded with phone calls, hundreds of phone calls till this very day, uh, saying, do we need to book to see the bishop? I said, oh, oh yes, baby. <laughs> um, please, here's my autograph and 50 bucks for the autograph. Thank you very much. So, yeah. Um, so they said we might be um, finding another venue for maybe it's a Thursday because they're expecting a lot of people this time. And they said, Bishop, um, get ready because there might be hundreds of people coming uh, to, to see you and welcome you there in Melbourne. So I'm very excited. Uh, we thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. All glory to his holy name. It's the Lord. I am nothing but a donkey of the Lord. He drives me wherever he wants. He can ride me wherever he wants. Unfortunately for me, the Lord's limousine is only a donkey. He doesn't want a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini. So I'm stuck with the donkey. So I'm very happy to be your donkey, Lord Jesus. Thank you very much. So you can ride me wherever you wish. Um, so we're going to Melbourne next week, uh, meeting our beautiful people in Melbourne. And say hello to Dan Andrews. <laughs> and I'll give him uh, a piece of me thought. Say, good day, Dan. Here you go, mate. Mm. Well done, Danny boy. Well done. Yes, yeah, so that's Melbourne. <laughs> no, I'm not seeing Dan Andrews. I, don't... I hope I see him. I'll pray for him. I'll pray for him and for his family. Um, I pray for every um, politician. I pray for every leader in the secular and the religious sector. I pray they truly have an encounter with the true divine God who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray for that. I pray for that. Um, our Divine Heart Sunday School liturgy will be held on Saturday the 12th of August at 6 p.m. here at the church. Parents who have their beautiful angels in our Sunday School Divine Heart, uh, there is a Holy Mass service held spe specifically for our children of the Sunday School. Please come with your children. Bring them to the Divine Heart, um, to the Divine Liturgy on Saturday the 12th of August at 6 p.m. sharp. Um, our uh, mission to the um, three countries, Turkey, Lebanon, and Syria, by the grace of the Lord, it's still on. We are going towards the end of this month uh, to Turkey, Lebanon, and Syria. If anybody wishes to donate for this beautiful cause, it is uh, through the Good Samaritan Aid Society, which is GSAS, abbreviated, G-S-A-S dot org dot A-U, and you can send your donations to the Good Samaritan Aid Society um, well, website. We've been getting a lot of donations so far. We will let you know how much we've received after our return from the trip, not before it. So, but definitely we'll let you know how much we've received and all of it where it's gone. It's going definitely to the people who are in need of it the most. Um, Yes, just be careful of these fake accounts, social media accounts under the bishop's name. They are fake. I've never held, never will any social media platform under my personal name. It's all under the churches. So if you see anything under my name, Bishop Mari, Mar Mari, or some people call me Mari Mari. <laughs> so if you see anything like that, it's fake. Don't fall into this trap. Let others know of it as well. And uh, one last thing. Uh, our beloved Michael is back here with us. He'll be in the foyer area. Um, those who have taken those petitions last Friday, if you have got them signed, please, if you could return them to our beloved Michael to take him with him and uh, present them to the, um, to the uh, right places there. This is for the protection of uh, parents and also our uh, freedom of religion. We don't want anyone to touch our children. 
or impose anything on our children against the parents' wishes and their wills, and against our uh, belief systems, our religious belief systems. So those petitions, if you've got them signed, please hand them back to Michael. He'll be sitting in the foyer area at the end of the session. Um, and I encourage you, if you haven't taken any petitions, if you haven't signed a petition, please also see Michael uh, to sign and to take some more and get him signed by people that you know in your circle. It's, very imp it's imperatively vital that we inform everyone about it and we need to get together and say no um, to people that are trying to touch our children. They've jabbed us willingly and forcefully. They're not going to touch our children. So you need to stand and you need to stand strongly against the current of this evil world. Amen? Amen. All right. Don't be afraid. For the Lord is our Savior. I need nothing. I'll worry about nothing. Who cares? They want to kill me. Please do. He'll do me the greatest favor. I can't wait to see my Lord. I'm over this sick world. I don't want nothing of it. Never will. All of it. Satan can swallow it. And he can get lost to hell. I want my Lord Jesus. 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 I want him. Let's stand for the finale prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace. The peace of Christ be with you, my beloveds. I'm standing here before you Knowing you are in control Resting in your heavenly glory Let your will be done for me Cast my burdens on to you, Lord, knowing you will take them all. I'm trusting in your blood you shed for me. I know you've called. You've
Forever 